Today I'm changing the oil on my Bronco Sport Badlands. This is the one with the 2.0 liter EcoBoost. And this is my first oil change. Uh, I'm gonna go underneath here and show you how to get the skid plate off first. So, there's four screws that are across the, the front here. And those are a uh, T30 Torx bit. And there's just four of those going across the front. And then there are six bolts that are, let me get this over here, right? There we go. That are 13 millimeter head on them. And uh, so you got that one and that one. And then the other side is exactly the same. You got there and there. And then in the back here, there are uh, two. Let's see right there. There's one. Those you just loosen up because the uh, the plate, skid plate, is slotted right there. So that uh, those kind of serve as a, a alignment pin. It makes it a lot easier to drop that skid plate down and then get it back up in there. So there's one there, and there's one right right there so uh that's all there is to get that skid plate down okay this is the tools you're going to need change your oil on your bronco sport badlands that is a 13 millimeter socket that's for removing the bolts for the skid plate 15 millimeter socket for the drain plug a t30 torx that's also for screws on the skid plate you're going to need an extension that's to get your oil filter wrench up in to the oil filter. You could probably reach it without it, but it'd be pretty difficult. And then, then you'll need your ratchet. You also are gonna need a funnel to uh, get down in there to fill it up with oil. Other than that, uh, that's all the tools that you'll need to do the entire job. So you can see that I've got it supported on the engine cradle there. And there and uh, you jack it up just on the corners right behind the rear wheels there uh, you can you can look that up online I think it probably tells you in the owner's manual as well but I looked it up online and make sure that that was the correct spot and it was so um, I'll leave that that part up to you so like I say I'll come back after I get that down so this is a skid plate off uh, ended up being four of the 13 millimeter head bolts that I had to take out and then the very back two you just loosen them up and uh, and then slide it out so that'll be our guide pins when we're putting it back together thing is uh, it's fairly heavy I'm guessing 25 pounds probably, probably. so you want to be careful you don't drop that on your head when you're doing that so I uh, I Loosen those two back ones up first, and then start taking them out around to the front. I took the four, uh, the T uh, thirty headed screws out first, and then I worked my way around with the bolts. So when I took that last bolt out, I wasn't underneath that pan, uh, so then I could just gradually let it down onto the floor. So this is the this is this is our bolts. These are the 13 millimeter headed ones and they used a blue Loctite on there. They weren't too bad to get out, but uh, they didn't fall out either. And then these are our, our screws. Again, those are T30. That's what size those are. So let's go underneath here. I'll show you. Now I saw on the one fives that the uh, drain plug was a 16 millimeter, but this one is a 15 millimeter. So our two liters are using a 15 mil, which is pretty common on all of these. And then our oil filter is right at the very front underneath this, back here away if I can, I don't know, there we go. So this is where those screws went in to the skid plate. And so you can pull this back, just look up underneath there and there's your oil filter right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that filter 
and uh, start draining that oil out and then we'll come back and uh, take a look at, at what uh, we need to finish up the job. Okay, I got it all part. Uh, drain plug has a gasket right there on it. I'm going to go ahead and reuse that this time around, but I'm going to buy a bunch of those and put them in stock for myself. Uh, I bought a dozen of the oil filters. Uh, it's a uh, FL910S Motorcraft. And uh, that, I don't know if I'll read the bottom. If you, if you look on... I looked on Amazon, they said they were made in China, but if you look on there, it says the majority of the content is made in the USA. So I don't know exactly know what that means, but uh, that's, that's at least closer than, than an awful lot of them. And I think Purelator's the one that makes the motorcraft filters now. Uh, the original Ford number, 9W70-6714BB. So that cr cross-references straight over to that or you can go to Wix. I think it was a 1348. If you uh, prefer to go with the Wix filter, I'd uh, I steer away from from Fram and all the cheap filters that are at uh, the big box parts stores because there's not much not much filtration in those. And I'm thinking why I did this was that uh, going with Motorcraft, it's, it's a a good quality filter and if I need to do uh, warranty I will keep track of everything I've done in the mileage that I've done it and they can't renege on my warranty. I was a, a a service manager for General Motors dealerships for many many years and there's a lot of ways to get out of warranties that's for sure. So anyway I did that uh, real quick uh, the Napa this is a 77-3862 and that fits our 910S perfectly. And this, I had to use a 77-3861 to get this filter off because it's slightly smaller on the outside than the replacement is. Why they did that, I have no clue. But that's what we got. So uh, you'll have to use a different tool to get the original off. But from that point on, you'll be able to use use this one. These are uh, from Napa, uh, right around 11 bucks, I think. And you can buy a full kit, which is what I've got, for under 30 And that gives you five different uh, sizes. So you got a size for almost everything. Uh, then I'm going to use... Uh, I'm using Motorcraft 5W30 Synthetic Blend there again. The uh, only reason I'm going Motorcraft motor oil is that I can have that on record if that's what's in the car just in case there's a problem down the line you know if I were to use mobile one uh, uh, Ford may say well oh, too bad for you you used the wrong motor oil so that's the only reason I'm doing that when it's out of warranty um, I'll, I'll use my my preference so with uh, that I think that'll wrap that up. I'll come back and show you real quick on uh, uh, checking your oil fil filter. And that should wrap this up. Okay, I've got uh, everything finished up. Put five and a half quarts in it. Uh, I started it and ran it before I put the skid plate up under it. Uh, just so I could check, make sure there was no leaks of any kind. Then I went... Went ahead and buttoned it up. Uh, this thing is where the oil goes. Here is where you dipstick, check the oil. Always want to make sure you do that after you do an oil change, just to make sure that uh, you got the proper amount in there. This is pretty deep down in there, so gonna require a funnel. I use, uh, grab it here. I use, uh, get back so you can see it. That thing right there. That's what I use on all of my well changes. And then I can just fill it up to five and a half quarts. And uh, and then I can put it in and fill it up. I get no spills of any kind. Uh, I actually got that off of Amazon. I think it was about 20 bucks. So uh, real quick, this is uh, uh, Motorcraft part number recommendations. 
I can see the FL910S is the oil filter. And uh, then you see the other other filters and, and part numbers there uh, as you need it. And I did put, so this is for uh, 2.0 liter EcoBoost in that it uses uh, uh, five and a half quarts. And the recommendation is uh, 5W30 synthetic blend, which that's what I use with the Motorcraft. It's the exact part number that I got. And you can see on the recommendations, if you're uh, in an area where it's going to be below, uh, 20 below, then use uh, 0W30. I live in Colorado uh, along the Front Range. It's a rarity we ever see that. And if we did, um, I usually don't ever <laughs> get out of the house anyway. So uh, that's uh, that's what the recommendations are. I'm going to go uh, show you how to reset the, uh, uh, the mileage for the oil. All right. So here uh, are at our main screen. And you just go down and hit your menu button. And it'll come up with this. You toggle it up and down with your OK button, which we want to go down to settings right there. And hit the OK button. It'll tell you oil life. Hit that OK button again. See, I've got 22%. And I'm going to hold it down and it'll reset it. And there it is. I'm at 100% oil life. And I'll just start over the countdown. So, as, as you can see, I got 5,430 miles on this. A little more than I would normally go. From now on, I will change it right at about 4,000 miles. Um, I, I've always, the uh, fuel-injected engines, that's about my limit on it. And uh, carbureted engines, which that's kind of where my job, I, I build hot rods and restore muscle cars and stuff. Uh, never go over 3,000 miles. Usually with those, you start at some point, just pull the dipstick and, and smell the dipstick. And as soon as it starts smelling like gasoline, uh, this, that's time to change it. So anyway, uh, I hope this video helped you. I did not do that air filter like I said I would. I will do that um, in another video. And I'm going to rotate the tires and do all the, uh, the uh, point checks on that and I'll kind of cover that in the, in the next video. So with that, uh, thanks for watching. Have a blessed day.